Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on kinetics. In fact, it is the last one of this series on kinetics. So I can't wait for this one here. Okay, pretty soon look at my YouTube channel and my website and you can sign, find some merchandise pretty soon. T-shirts, maybe some stickers. All right. All right, so let's get moving with this problem here. Here we go. Bam. So a kinetics mechanism example number two. Number two. Here we go. So, a proposed mechanism for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is as follows. Right here, we got step one, and here's step one. And that's H2O2 aqueous plus iodide ion produces H2O liquid plus OI to the negative one. That's an ion. Okay, step number two. Notice that I've lined my arrows, and that is the reactants and the products aligned with that arrow. It's very nice there. Okay, step number two is H2O2 plus IO minus one produces H2O liquid plus O2 gas plus I minus one. All right, so that is the proposed mechanism. Now, some information on here is that this top first step is the slow step and the second step is a fast step. Okay, that's going to be important information for us in deriving the rate law for the overall reaction here in a little bit. So hold on to that because that is important information. Okay, so we're going to be able to draw a line in the sand, that is draw a line um, underneath both step one and step two, and then we're going to ask what is the net equation? So the net equation is summing things up, paying particular attention to what is on the reactant side, what is on the product side, how many are on the reactant side, how many are on the product side. That is, which things cancel out and are not in the net equation. So I want you to do that there on your own for just a moment here. And then here we go. Bam. Okay, it's going to be two H2O2, that's two hydrogen peroxides, produces two waters plus an oxygen gas. Okay, that is the net equation. You should see that there are certain things that actually canceled out. Okay, and there's summing up of other certain things like the waters and the hydrogen peroxide that you have two of them. Okay, all right, so let's find out more details about each of this. So what is the rate law of each step? So we've got to get the rate law for step one and the rate law for step two. Okay, remember, since this is a proposed mechanism, each of these steps, steps one and step two, is a molecular event. Since it's a molecular event, then we can write or uh, derive the rate law based solely on the stoichiometry of the reactants only. So we're going to get the rate law for each of the two steps here. So the rate law for the first step is R is equal to K, H2O2 to the first power, I minus one to the first power. Okay, notice that's the reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents. Okay, the rate law for the second step is R is equal to K H2O times uh, OI to the negative one. Again, it's based solely on the reactants and the stoichiometry of those reactants. Okay, what is the molecularity of each step, step one and step two? So each of these is bimolecular. Okay, and hopefully you see that with step one, the rate law, you have a you have the uh, uh, exponent of one and another exponent of one. You sum those up, you get two. The step number two, you have an exponent of a one and then you have an exponent of a one. You sum those up, you get a two. So both of these steps, steps one and step two, are bimolecular events. Okay, is there an intermediate? So um, an intermediate is produced and later consumed. So question is, is there an intermediate? Yes, there is. Okay, now I want you to highlight the intermediate here. Okay, so the intermediate is produced, later consumed, it's not in the net equation. So what is the intermediate? And the intermediate is I O, sorry, O I to the negative one. And I'm going to circle those right there for you and then give you that definition for that intermediate again. An intermediate is produced and later consumed and therefore is not in the net equation. So again, it's produced, that's why it's in step number one on the product side, and in step number two, it is on the reactant side. So it's produced in step number one, consumed in step number two. Hopefully that makes sense. And that's an intermediate. Notice that that intermediate is not in the net equation. Super important, okay. Is there a catalyst? So a catalyst is something that is used in the reaction but later um, produced essentially. So you, it is not consumed. 
okay, in the reaction whatsoever. So there is a yes on this one. And I told you with the previous video that there is most certainly a catalyst in the next problem that we're doing. So what is the catalyst, you ask? And the catalyst is I minus one. The iodide ion is the catalyst for this event. Okay, so how do I know it's the catalyst? So I'm gonna highlight this right here for you and see it's on step number one on the reactant side and step number two on the product side. So whatever you used on the reactant side, you get back out on the product side so it's not consumed in the reaction. So a catalyst is on the reactant side and then on the product side and is not in the net equation, in other words. Hopefully that makes sense for you for a catalyst. I want you to pay particular attention to where the intermediates are and where the catalyst is. And there are two different sides, okay? They're both on reactant and product side. It's just that the intermediate is produced, later consumed. The catalyst is on the reactant side and then you get it back out again on the product side later on, okay? And therefore it's not consumed. Whatever amount you started off with a catalyst, you get that same amount back. It's not used at all, okay? What is the rate law for the overall reaction? So some of you might be thinking, aha, this is the rate law for the overall reaction because I'm gonna look at that overall reaction that I summed up and I'm gonna say R is equal to K times H2O2 to the second power because it's the stoichiometric coefficient of a two. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, can you write the rate law based on a net equation? The answer is no. So this does not apply. You cannot write any rate law based on the overall or net equation. That doesn't work, okay? But what you can do is look at some other information that was given in this problem. And I said to you early on that there are some two things here that will be of uh, essential importance for you. And that is the slow step and the fast step. Now, the reaction cannot go any faster than the slowest step. It's kind of like the weakest link in the chain, right? This chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So the same thing is with a mechanism. And the reaction cannot go any faster than the slowest step. So the rate law for the overall reaction is based on the slowest step of the mechanism. Okay, so the rate law for the overall reaction cannot be determined from the net equation. I already said that, but I'll say it again. It is always the same as the rate law for the slow step, which is the rate determining step or the RDS. So what is the rate law for this overall reaction? I'm gonna highlight it here in this giant yellow circle. So the rate law for this whole entire reaction is the slow steps rate law for that molecular elementary step event which is R is equal to K H2O2 in brackets to the first power, I minus one to the first power. Notice that you can have a catalyst in the rate law for the overall reaction. You can have the catalyst in the rate law for an elementary or a molecular event step as well, okay? So this is a great problem. I want you to review it, review the previous one so that you understand mechanisms of chemical reactions with kinetics, okay? Um, I am the crazy hat chemist and I got a crazy hat here for you, okay? Um, if you like that video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, find my website, I'm online. I got lots of great videos. Pass on my website and my YouTube channel to all your cool chemistry friends or um, anyone your cat, your dog, whatever. So give me a thumbs up. See you later for next time for the next unit on equilibrium. I can't wait for that. Bye now.